Our next speaker is Neno Duplan, who is the president of Locus Technologies. They've developed a data management and analytics platform to manage water resource data and um, for, for enterprises, and they've been doing this for a while now, and um, particularly managing even GHG emissions data for, for many different companies. I'm um, very pleased to have him with us today talk, to talk about Locus. Please welcome him. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to talk about water management and uh, sustainability in general at enterprise level. We have heard many talks about water quality and, uh, at, uh, and uh, quantity management at utility level over the last two days. And uh, we have taken it from different perspectives. Uh, I thought this was a funny slide, it's getting crowded in the cloud, everybody wants to get that day, uh, that way uh, these days. And we have been there for 10 years and uh, have seen many newcomers. A couple of notes about the company and then I will focus on, uh, on the water, the main subject of the talk. Uh, we started in 1997, we were at the right place at the right time, right here in uh, Silicon Valley in Mountain View. This is our office and uh, actually when we started, we started as a consulting company focusing on uh, designing, building, and operating treatment plants for water treatment such as like uh, this. And this is not a water treatment plant for uh, utility. This is a water treatment plant for the companies that operate the Superfund site, uh, include Raytheon, Intel, and several others. And there are many of these around. And what we have realized within a year in business that these are really not water treatment plants. These are data generation plants. They spit out huge amounts of data that was landing in spreadsheets and not, yet, not managed at all at the enterprise uh, level. So from day one, we believe that companies should own their uh, environmental data and have easy access to it. This is a very simple statement, but it's a huge problem today. 99% of the companies in the US do not own their own environmental data and don't have access unless they make a phone call to their consultant. And that's a, that's a problem with the industry. That's a problem that we have uh, set uh, our strategy to solve. We have Pioneer Software as a service model in the industry. We have been in the cloud continuously since 1999. Uh, with, uh, in that time frame, we have built a system that is used at 15,000 sites worldwide for some of the uh, largest companies, and I'll talk a few about that in a few minutes. We manage about 120 million analytical records and we publish these statistics live on our website. And if you think each of those records typically costs between $200 and $500 to obtain, and it's useless unless you put it to some use, that's about $7 billion in analytical cost alone for the companies that own the data. And it costs only pennies to manage it uh, appropriately. <coughs> Over the last two years, we have a half a billion dollar logins into the system. So heavy usage, and uh, we have a stellar <coughs> Fortune 50 uh, list of uh, customers. We are profitable, fast growing, and debt free company. We did not have any uh, venture capital or private equity uh, money at the beginning. All our profits were reinvested from day one, and we have built the company to about $10 million levels today, and we are growing at 30%. <coughs> this is a graph from a recent uh, Gartner report on the software industry and uh, over the last 24 months we have seen over 100 <coughs> new companies stepping in this market primarily on the carbon side and you can see that we occupy a pretty high position in terms of every possible factor in the in Gartner's uh, rating. I will switch now to focus a little bit on more on water because we heard all about energy and sustainability and uh, carbon over the last couple of days. Water matters, water is important. There is a huge fundamental global problem and there is a shortage of drinking water. Of the total water in the world, only 2% of the water is available for drinking and half of that is un unavailable and uh, inaccessible because it's uh, <coughs> tied up in the ice in the North uh, Pole and, uh, and elsewhere. So that 1% that remains for drinking is uh, shrinking practically daily and has to be managed. Yeah, I couldn't resist to quote the uh, ancient Marriott quote, water everywhere, water, water everywhere, no need to, to drink. And I think we are heading in, that, uh, in uh, that direction if we don't do something. Unfortunately, uh, the awareness of water is getting up higher on the list every day. Another quote that I uh, <coughs> like because it deals with energy 
and usage of water is, uh, is from unlikely source memoirs of Geisha from 95 who can remove it. Water is very powerful, can do a lot of work, and we use it for you know, energy around uh, transportation and practically every, every, every other uh, industrial uh, needs. Let's look at uh, how water is used uh, in the enterprise. In uh, sustainability reporting relative to air emissions on the top scale, water discharge, greenhouse gas management, and waste management, each of these categories have element, elements that deal with energy, water, and ERP systems that are installed in enterprise today typically cannot uh, handle the requirements for uh, sustainability management. And at intersection of each of these columns and rows, there's a software application that typically it's either a spreadsheet or it's a single silo application developed by a consultant. And our job as a company has been to integrate that in a single software platform offered over the web. When you look at the four major categories that, uh, uh, that uh, constitute sustainability, energy, water, air, uh, and it's basically, you cannot really look at one independent of other. All these components have to come together in a single application and manage in a single piece of software that would mimic the ERP system that we have experienced on uh, human resources and supply chain management. It's funny because if you, if you replace world energy with fire, you practically have uh, uh, four elements from the from the movie Angels and Demons on the, on the, on the, on the four segments and, uh, for those who, for those who saw the movie know what it means, Illuminati. Uh, so, water management comes in all kinds of uh, fashions and natures. It appears at three basic scales, at natural scale, facility scale, and enterprise scale. We don't do much on the natural scale, that's a you know, big watershed management. Companies like IBM are very good at it. We focus entirely on a facility scale and, and then aggregate information at the uh, top of the corporate world in an enterprise uh, system. We believe that water is next carbon. And uh, carbon has uh, <coughs> pretty much stolen the headlines over the last two years for the obvious reason. And I, I'm not saying that carbon is not important. But water is more important. Why? Because we can live with carbon, we can live without energy, but we cannot live without water. And uh, carbon and water are very interrelated, as we will see in these couple of slides. We, heard, we started hearing the, the term water footprint. And I want to spend a few minutes what that it means and how do we measure it and uh, how do we define it. The water footprint is not as easy as carbon footprint. Carbon footprint can be distilled in a single number, equivalent tons of carbon across the six primary gases and a few others. So it's relatively simple. It's uh, empirically driven by formulas given by regulators or voluntary reporting organizations. And uh, uh, that's the reason why we are seeing so many startups in this space, because it provides a low barrier to entry. Uh, on the water side, calculations are still evolving. Uh, they are complicated, but uh, you can uh, rest assured that they are going to be as complex and inconsistent as on the carbon side. And over the last uh, year and a half, we have seen two voluntary organizations stepping in to provide a framework for water reporting. Unfortunately, those frameworks only deal with water quantity, not, uh, not quality. The water challenges in, uh, <coughs> exist almost in every industry. I'm going I'm to quickly uh, jump around across a couple of industries because we deal with their issues on a daily basis. Obviously the energy is the, the, the biggest uh, usage, has the biggest usage of water and energy and water are very related and uh, in fact 25% of California energy production relates to water issues. In fact the entire output of uh, the Abo Canyon nuclear power plant is consumed just to move water around in California. And that doesn't include dishwashers and, and, um, and uh, home consumption. The pumping that is required to provide water to agriculture 
generates a tremendous amount of greenhouse gases. If it could eliminate this, California would not have greenhouse gas issues at all, because that's 25% reduction. Obviously, it cannot be done easily. There is a significant print between, for that reason, there is a significant link between uh, water footprints and uh, carbon footprints. But other industry, this is a site in Lake County, north of here, where geothermal uh, industry has uh, operated for many years. And those ponds that you see are highly contaminated with hazardous waste, contain the drilling mud. And industry that has been dotted as a clean practically has major uh, contamination issues with the uh, water. I wish I could uh, dwell more on nuclear industry. Uh, the comeback of nuclear industry depends entirely on water, and we are witnessing a major disaster that will set back the climate change for years to come because industry was about to come back. I still believe it will, because we really have no choices. And if you look at the disaster in Japan, it's not about nuclear core and being <coughs> damaged by the earthquake. It's a water damage to secondary cooling uh, and pumping system that happened that created the, all the problems, as well as water is necessary to cool the core of the reactor. 